So today, we talked more about Newton's laws, and talked more about forces and using Newton's laws. So, reminder, Newton's first law says that an object will stay at its behavior. Its, its behavior will stay the same, whether it's at rest or at constant velocity, unless acted on by an outside force. Okay. And Newton's second law says that if an object does experience a change in speed or direction, meaning an acceleration, a change in behavior, then that means that it's experiencing some outside force. So the acceleration it would experience is equal to the net force, the sum of all the forces that would give you a non-zero answer, the net force acting on that, divided by the object's mass. Usually we end up writing that as the sum of the forces is equal to ma. So the acceleration is in the same direction as the net force. Newton's third law says that, it's the, collo it, the colloquial form of it is, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if we're thinking about some box that is on the floor, the reason why the box is not falling through the floor is because the floor is pushing up on the box. And the reason why it's not accelerating in the either up or down, in the positive y direction or the negative y direction, is because the force that the earth is exerting on this box, pulling down by gravity, is equal to the force the floor is exerting on the box, pushing it up. And so then we have F sub G the force of gravity, is equal to the force of the floor pushing up on the box, which we call the normal force. The normal force It's not there because it is usual. It is there because we're talking about the normal to a surface. It is directed perpendicularly from the surface. So right here, the surface is flat. So the perpendicular to that surface is a straight line up. An object will only have this if it is contacting, in contact with some other surface. So if a person is jumping off a cliff or something like that, jumping down a flight of stairs, they don't have a normal force acting on them. The only force you're experiencing if you neglect the friction from air molecules is the force of gravity. So that would be, in this case, if the ground is down here and the person is falling, then it has a force of gravity directed downwards, and that's it. So acceleration depends on that force of gravity. But of course, the acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. If the person is instead in contact with the floor, then it will have, that person will have the force of gravity downward, and also the normal force from the ground pushing up on the person, so that the person is not actually moving if they're just standing there. Because there's no acceleration, the forces are equal. So the sum of the forces, in that case, would be zero. So the force of gravity would be equal to the normal force. If I wanted to write this in correct vector notation for this box, then what I would do is say that we have the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be zero because it's not moving. The sum of the forces in the y direction have to be zero because it's not moving. Okay. But of course, if the object were moving, then this would be equal to ma, where a is some unknown acceleration. Or maybe, you, depending on the problem, you might know what the acceleration actually is. In this case, there are no forces in the x direction, so this is a trivial thing to just say, oh, that's zero. In this, we have the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the gravity force plus the normal force. So this is in full vector stuff. But what I really want to do to analyze this is to put it in terms of magnitudes and the direction of the forces. Because, of course, force is a vector. That's why I have the vectors there. You can't just add them like this. 
So, you have to actually say the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the force of gravity is going downward, so it'll be negative the magnitude of the force of gravity and positive the normal force because the normal force is going up. So it's got a positive sign. We know it's not moving, so this is zero, so that means that the normal force is equal to the gravitational force or the weight of the object. So the normal force is equal to the mass of the object times 9.80 meters per second squared. So that is what the value of the normal force would be. So when you're analyzing this, you're, you're going to want to look at the behavior of the object, see what's happening to it in the different dimensions. Because since force is a vector, you have to look at both the x and the y separately. So if, say for example, First of all, we're going to neglect friction. We're going to say that we're pulling on some wagon. with a rope. And we're holding onto the rope right there. And this, we'll call this angle theta. Okay, so that person is pulling on the rope to move the wagon. So we want to know what's actually happening to the wagon. Okay, so if we analyze what's happening on the wagon, we can draw a free body diagram which is a diagram that shows all the forces acting on the wagon alone. We're not talking about the person. The person's acting on the, on the wagon, so we need to worry about that. But if we're just talking about the forces on the wagon, then we need to only talk about those forces doing that. So we could draw a diagram. That would be, you can kind of do it however you'd like. We'll do it over here. Draw the wagon. And we can look at the forces that are acting on it. So we have the force of gravity pulling down. And since it's in contact with the floor, that means that we have the normal force from the floor pushing up. And then we also have this force of tension in the rope at some angle theta exerted by the person. And in order to actually explain what's going on to this wagon, we need to look at the forces in the x and in the y direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction there's only one force that's acting in the x direction, and that's the x component, the x part of that tension. So we're going to call that T sub x. In the y direction, we have three forces that are involved, because we have gravity, we have the normal force, and we have the y component of that tension. Okay. Now, if the wagon is not moving up or down, then its acceleration is going to be zero in that dimension. So this, we can say, is going to be zero. Right here, we know that this is the only force that's acting on this wagon in the x direction, unless we talk about friction, but we're not doing that right now. So the only force acting on it is the tension from the rope that the person is pulling it with. And so the acceleration the experience in the x direction is only going to be that from that x part of the tension. So what's happening with this, if you wanted to figure out, say, like what the tension in that rope actually is, and we can do that by looking at this equation now with um, the fact that it is not moving up or down in the y direction. And if you want to put in signs, which you do want to do, like I was mentioned before with the magnitudes, then we know that the y component of the t is, putting, is uh, going up the n is going up and the gravity is going down, so this is negative the magnitude of fg plus the magnitude of n plus the magnitude of ty. Okay. Now what is ty? Ty would be the overall tension times the sine of the angle because of the triangle, breaking it down to the components like we've done before. So that means this is going to be negative fg plus n plus t, the magnitude of t, times the sine of the angle. So this means, by the way, that unlike in just the plain old box 
sitting on the floor problem, the normal force is actually not equal to the gravity force. It's equal to the difference between the tension and the gravity. Why is that? Well, the person's pulling up on the wagon a little bit by pulling at an angle like that. So the floor isn't uh, experiencing the full force of the weight. And so it doesn't have to react as much as if it were just there and the person weren't pulling up on it. The floor will only give as much as is needed to balance things out. If it would give more, then it wouldn't be balanced anymore. So the normal force would actually be the difference between the gravity and the tension. You can see that just by solving here, where we have the normal force would be equal to, bringing that over there and the T over there as well, positive the force of gravity minus your tension times your sine of theta. Okay. So this is just one example of what we're going to be doing, but it shows how you need to analyze the forces in the different directions. You need to look at the x's, you need to look at the y's to see what exactly is going on, and also note, do you have an equilibrium situation where there is no motion in a certain direction, and can you say the acceleration is zero? And what does that mean for what's going on with regard to the relationships of the other forces? Okay, but it's all about Newton's three laws. An object in rest, or at rest, or in constant motion, meaning constant speed and direction, will stay that way unless the sum of the forces is not zero, meaning unless there's a non-zero force. And so that non-zero force will cause an acceleration of that object being the speed or, or change in speed or direction, that is acceleration. And any force will have a pair, a, par a partner that will make up a pair, um, that will be equal in magnitude and negative in direction. So for example, this wagon, the floor will exert a force that is equal in size to the weight that it feels from the wagon. In this case, it's the weight minus the part that it's being lifted off the floor with. But those two things will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Okay. So we will be doing many examples of this in class, and um, we'll talk about this a little bit more next time as well.